If white tries to stop it by playing something like knight g5, we can still play bishop e7, rook to f8, we played the knight to f7, and you know, again, we're removing the knight from here, one day we'll be able to push g5 and attack. Whereas at queen side, everything got lo nothing. looks okay, right? Yeah. yeah. So White has no, he's got no chances there. No that activity. is why, you know, after f5, I think White has to take, right? Because if he's not taking, then this plan looks so great for us. And I don't think White can stop it, so... He takes, he takes f6, we retake with the she pawn, of course. Again, we don't want to uh, allow White, you know, to control the e-file. So here, uh, White castles. And then the move I like the most here is knight h6. Our idea is you know, to play knight f7 and from f7 the knight is gonna support a future e5, right? So after knight h6... It looks a little strange to me, the knight on h6 here, but you know, like you're saying to me, the, the knight's yeah. got a maneuver, you know, this position is a little strange, honestly, with the yeah. pawn on c4. And yeah, previously, as I said, it was like a drawish, you know, looking position, but right now it's quite open. There's quite a lot of play. And you know, yeah, another definitely. thing I like about this line, sometimes White, you know, he struggles finding, you know, uh, a way to develop his queen side because if he moves the knight e2, then we are able to champ to b3. That's a nasty claim. Yeah, if he cannot, you know, if he cannot move the knight uh, from d2, it's like he cannot play bishop c1. Or it's like he's down two pieces, right? I mean, his, his bishop right, and rook yeah. on the queen side are completely frozen. That's what I like about this line as well, right? It's like, as queen side is frozen, right? So, after knight h6, and this is, you know, I had the, the chance of playing this, and I found this line, uh, like, four or five years ago. Uh, I worked in this position myself. After rook e1, which looks like the most natural move, Very natural right? move, pressure on the e5. And this this was my idea, right? And again, I was lucky to... I had the chance of playing this. Why, uh, sorry, black can play e5 here. It's quite a surprise, right, for white. After e5, it's like black starts sacrificing. But see, he has to take. Bishop takes. First thing, the bishop on h3 was right. being attacked. And, and after um, rook takes d7, see, uh, if he takes on e5, then, look, the queen on b6, we are attacking f2. The g3 pawn is not that protected. I mean, if we play something like rook c8, we'll be attacking that pawn. Moves like knight g4 and knight f5 are coming as well, right? Those two pawns are under attack. Bishop c5 comes in as well. And another move I like so much, sometimes we have the chance of playing rook g7 and rook g8. So this is like too much for white, right? Suddenly, from a very equal position, we get a great activity, right? I, I don't even think it's it's even sacrificing upon me. I, I well, don't even see like, how white yeah. can even accept it. I mean, it just looks way too crazy with white's bishop and rook on the queen side completely right. out of the game. I mean, black is essentially attacking here with a free hand with two extra pieces. And you know, uh, actually, I had the chance of playing this when I played this. Uh, I faced this bishop takes d7, rook takes d7, and now my opponent um, played, he didn't take on e5, because yeah, he was like smelling the danger, right? And he played something like rook e2, but then I had the chance of playing e4, and now it's like black takes the lead, right? It's almost like black has everything. I mean, he After controls 91, the queen side, right. you know, I mean, white's positions, there's no quarter. Then we have a clear way of attacking yeah. on she file, right? I mean, rook she 8 I don't know, rook she 7 I mean, the thing is, the plan is clear, right? I mean, we have a clear target, which is the she free pawn, right? So, and, you know, he couldn't play b3. I mean, that's, some, that's something the main to attack, thing, yeah. right? I mean... I think what? that's the main idea in this in this variation. Although Black is giving up his tension in the center and the pressure against the d4 pawn by playing right. an early c4 push, the fact that it's so difficult for White to just get any kind of activity, which he normally right. wants in the advanced variation, uh, the bishop, the rook, and the queen side. I mean, it's just so tough for White to free his position and and, uh, and, and go ahead and get out there. So let's go ahead and, and move on here. I mean, this has got to be a great position uh, out of the opening for Black. 
Let's right. move on and, and check out another line here in the advanced variation. Right. So here, instead of g3, let's see what happens if white develops bishop e2. After um, bishop e2, we simply play bishop d7. It's important to bring the bishop to d7 quickly just to really make sure white's not going to be able to open anything up on the queen side. Right. And after um, bishop e2, bishop d7, white castles. And here, a very nice uh, point. Uh, here, we don't have to castle that quickly. We'll play knight e7 first. Now I'll show you why playing knight e7 first, it's better. See, my idea is, uh, if he plays something like rook e1, see that here the moves are not that important. The plans, uh, we have to know the plans, right? Because it's such a close position that sometimes I can play something like, like queen d8 again and nothing right. won't happen, right? Yeah. I mean, so after rook e1, our idea, we'll play queen c7. That's kind and of a weird move. Yeah, I mean, why would you put you the queen tell, Yeah, seven? white queen c7, right? But see, white's idea in this line, he usually plays rook b1 and b3. So it's like we are running away before he does that. And once he plays b3, the c3 pawn is going to be quite weak, right? So that's why we play queen c7. The queen on c7 is also doing a nice job, maybe preparing some pressure against the e5 pawn in the future as well. When we play f6, right? And the key point here, well, rook e1, queen c7... This plan it's worth remembering. We want to play knight c8, knight b6, and here we see another advantage of queen c7. And from b6, we are ready to play bishop a4. And then it's like the queen side, it's totally frozen. Complete right? lockdown. And, and the bishop on a4, Yeah. this is a really cool plan. Sometimes it can even sneak into the game. Yeah, c2, right? Yeah. yeah, very dangerous idea. And you know, here, like I said, it's like we control a queen side and in the future we can try opening the game at you know at king side so that is why here we understand why queen c7 is such an important move right because we free the b6 square for our knight and then we are ready to come to a4 and we also have to understand why castling quickly is not that great we want the c8 square for our knight right we can castle later so here very important to remember, knight e7, queen c7, and knight c8, b6, and a4. That plan, in my opinion, you know, it's the best in this position. It's like, after this plan, all our pieces are doing something right. And if if I control queen side in this line, I feel my position is quite solid and great. So, okay. Uh, here, uh, after bishop d7, after castling, uh, knight e7, we don't want to castle that quickly. Here white, we'll see a, a, a nice line I like here. Uh, white plays rook b1, he wants to play b3. He's got to at least threaten b3. Right. He's got to at least give it a shot. And sometimes, you know, b3 is not a great move because sometimes we can take, and after knight takes b3, sometimes we can consider bishop a4. And it's not that clear, right? I mean... It's so, definitely not that easy no. to play b3. But you know, absolutely not. There's no need to uh, allow b3. I'm a fan of playing queen c7. Again, b3 is not that great for white. After taking the c3 pawn, will be very weak. And uh, in this example, white plays knight h4. It's, it's a like, weird move. Why, why would he play the knight to the outside of the board? I mean, what's what's the idea with this? Well, one? I guess he wants to play f4 and you know, again, grab more space at kingside. That's I guess the that's, only thing white can do in this line, I mean... That's got to be the biggest thing to watch out for for black. I mean, it's so tough for white to make that b3 break on the queen side. White's almost only source of counterplay is going to be if he can play f4, g4, and f5 and, and get a, a pawn storm and, and activity right. on the king side. But, you know, also, if he starts pushing those pawns too much, his king is there, right? He can almost so, weaken his own king, yeah. Right, I yeah. mean, perhaps that favors us, uh, you know, attacking as well. So here... Uh, we can stick to our plan with knight c8, knight b6, and bishop a4, but knight c6 is great as well. It's like, you know, asking the knight h4, if he takes, then we take with the h pawn, and then the h file is open. And Incredibly our position, solid position. Yeah. No weaknesses, right? It's really hard to make a mistake here with black. Black can just castle queenside. Right. Prepare to open the king side and attack white's king. And okay, uh, white plays knight df3. It's like he still wants, right, in the future to attack. 
So, okay, knight takes. We are happy trading a couple of pieces. We are playing black, right? Knight takes h4. We play bishop e7. We develop a piece. We win some tempo. White plays knight to f3. And here, another move I like too much. We can simply castle here and take it easy. But, again, comes f5, which looks great. And it reminds me of one of the previous lines we saw before. Uh, White, if he wants to open the game, he has to do it right now. Take him. This is very dangerous, right? Very I mean, dangerous. If Black right. is able to, to jam out with e5 in the center and get those big pawns right. rolling, also Black is going to get the open g file. Uh, and it's going to be very useful to attack White. Looks like Queenside, it's a very nice place for uh, it's safe. The king there, right? It's safe. It's and a good neighborhood. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's and, a good part of town. And you know, if. If he, after f5, if he's not taken, then our pawn is already advanced. And if we can play g5 here h6, in the future, castles, something like that, right. bring the other rook over again. It's like at queen side, everything is under control. White cannot, you know, attack there. There's no way. And but we can uh, attack at king side, right? So, well, white plays bishop g5 here. This is a good idea yeah. for white. I mean, white's getting rid of his worst piece on the board, and he's trading it for black's good bishop on e7. So it's but a nice you know, positional and especially idea. Especially in the French, we'll see a lot of positions where this bishop, which is a very bad one, sometimes it comes to the game via e8 and g6 as well, sorry. So, actually, well, here bishop c6 looks great. We want to retake with the queen on e7, and then we are ready to launch an attack at king side. Okay, white... Uh, Place g3. The lines we are looking here, we want to, you know, show the main ideas, right? Again, you know, uh, white can play a uh, lot of moves, right? But the ca character of the position, it's same. So after g3, black castles here. And okay, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7. I think here we can, you know, state that our middle game, it's, you know, quite promising. Especially because we are going to play, you know, h6 and g5. So, it's, it's just tough to figure out what rook, white's going to yeah, do. Rook d8 as well, right? Yeah. So, like I said, sometimes it's better to know the ideas, especially in this closed position, right? We don't have to worry about theory too much because unless we can make a, a little mistake, but we won't get made it, right? I mean, we can <laughs> play something like king d7 and I, I don't think white can punish us, right? That's what I mean. So here, again, I think this is the kind of position we have to look for when we play this variation, especially against a3, right? When we play c4, we are looking for a close game like this one. I think that equality is there, and we can also, you know, look for an advantage. So, well, this is, you know, uh, all suggestions for the advanced variation. I hope uh, you like this line. So... Yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to point out, as we're wrapping up here on the advanced variation in Chapter 1, that uh, I myself have played the advance with this A3 line quite a bit, and this this idea of black closing the center by pushing the pawn to C4, um, just so early in the game, just a quick recap here on the electronic board, um, just the idea, it's really uncomfortable for white. I mean, when I'm playing the A3 line, I want to play B4. I want to open the game up. I want to go crazy. I want to attack black from Perhaps the Perhaps you want to face C takes D4 instead of C4, right? It's a lot easier. It's a lot yeah. easier. Now, the downside of pushing the pawn to C4 is that the character of the game is drastically changed. So positional, yeah. yeah. And you got you to gotta be you know, at least familiar with the basic ideas that we've reviewed here. Right. But uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is that this C4 push... It's just so uncomfortable to play against for white. I mean, I, I'm sitting there scratching my head, like ripping my eye, ripping my hair out. You know, how am I going to get some counterplay? It, it's it's very difficult. I mean, the, the idea was C4 locking down the queen side. Um, black really just has such a solid foundation to work from, controlling that side of the board so firmly. It's extremely uncomfortable to play against for white. Um, so that's going to do it for chapter one on the advanced variation. Uh, this really should give you a, a lot of uh, you know material to add to your arsenal against the Milner Berry Gambit with that early sacrifice of the D4 pawn uh, and, and all the other different uh, aggressive ideas in the advanced variation.